So it just did a quick sim of this, 100 frames. Um, I'm keen on this sort of blue, so I'm going to get rid of that in the uh, emission colour. Like that. And I might crank my density up a bit. There we go, so we can sort of see it a bit better. Got this sort of weird bit at the end where it seems to go off. Um, but you see, it's quite a nice smoke already. Um, it's not massively high res, but it's alright. So let's work on making this a bit more interesting. So I'm just going to open the graph again, come over here, and let's hide that. So this is the graph as it stands at the moment. Um, if you hit L on your keyboard, it sort of straight lines it all out again for you. So let's have a look at what we've got so far. I've disconnected the collider, so we're not using that anymore. I'm not using this volume scope. Uh, get rid of that cube. So we have our platonic shape as our emitter. It's going into the source air. We've got our aero solver settings. Our simulate aero file cache which I've cached out. Um, I should have done that to read. It's just overwritten that last frame. You've got to be careful if you don't, if you do it, leave it right, and then you go to a frame like that, it will recalculate that frame, which will probably be blank because it hasn't got any information. Um, so, got that. File cache, got the material, we've signed the smoke material to it, and we've changed it around with them, and we made some templates of other ones that we can use. Right, so let's think about how we can make this a little bit more visually interesting. Um, one of the things we want to do is we want to vary these emission settings. So things like fog density, temperature, speed, and all this sort of stuff. And how we go about it is, um, if I tab, we need a node called vary source property. And it makes that. And what this is, it allows us to add some randomization to some of these settings. So let's just have a look at the info. So I've clicked on the info of the various source properties and it tells us here. So um, if we look in the info, we have this sort of, let's do this first. So it has a property, so we have to write in the property that we want to sort of randomize here. Um, in the info it tells us the properties we can use from the source air, fog density, temperature, inherent velocity, initial speed, and initial speed direction. So the first one we do is going to do fog density. So um, what I normally do is I normally go to the source air, I go down to fog density, and just select it, control C, and I paste it into there. So it's going to replace, it can multiply or add, but we're going to replace it and we're going to give it a random value between, at the moment it is set to 2.5, I'm going to do a random value of minus 2.5 to 2.5, let's make it 4. Um, so done that we just got to hook it up I and mean, how you hook it up is you unhook him feed that one into that one and then we feed that one into that one so if I now go back to my cache node put it to right rewind and we hit play and see what happens Actually, let's make that a bit less
Um, can't massively see it, but you can see it is slightly changing there. It's not all evenly as dense as it was. And how it works is that um, the source air emits from the vertices on this surface. Um, and when you vary the source property, you're varying them on the on the vertices of these properties. So uh, on one frame, this vertice is going to be at four, emitting four, and then on the next frame it might be on um, another number, sort of randomised. If I put a minus two in, I might try minus ten, just to see because obviously anything below zero won't emit anything. So it was a way to try and make it have more zeros in it and sort of show that. Put that up to ten as well. The um, the way it works. Let's try that again. So hopefully that's a bit more varied. You can see it is varying it out, but I'm not really getting it as visually as I would like. Um, I'm going to set the fog density to set. So that should, rather than having it as a rate added, and already we can see it's changed that. And you can see where these vertices are have got density to them, and these ones haven't. So let's do that. So you can see randomly different. We're adding this sort of random emission of density. So as you can see, it's already randomising up this whole sort of smoke. Um, so I probably won't make that so extreme. I might make that two, and let's do this as four. Um, let's add another one. So I can just Control C, Control V that, and it will duplicate it. There we go, um, and. I want to do temperature. So let's get temperature so I don't have to write it out. Like that. And you can see here it was called it's called temperature, but later on when we were in the material it was voxel temperature. So before it gets simulated it has just temperature, but when it's on the other side of it, you have to put voxel in front of it. Anyway, um, right, so so it's going to copy temperature into there, and at the moment our temperature is 250. So I'm going to do random between, say, well, 20 is the minimum, well, the, the ambient temperature. So I'll do, say, 40 and 300. Just sort of making it up. Um, and what you do with these is you daisy chain these into each other. So we just need to do that. Um, I'm going to join that. Sometimes when you do backwards connections, it doesn't like it and, and actually can crash. So be careful. Um, let's do that. There we go. And if you wanted to, you can name these so you know. So this one's temp. Like that. And this one is fog. Let's call that fog. Oops, I don't need that. And as I said, you, you can, if you want to keep displaying the, oh, I just show notes up. Yeah, there it's there. So now it's showing the node type as well. Um, right. 
So let's give that a place. And what should happen is variance density plus varying speed of it going upwards because we're changing the temperature. But I, what I might do is on the source air change that from rate to set so we're just getting different set temperatures. So that's adding a bit more sort of interest to that. Um, if I go to the smoke material, let's crank that up to four. So we see it a bit better. So you can see we're getting these sort of bits and bobs that are going on. Um, it's not too bad. Um, so I'm just going to vary something else. I'm going to do two more now. I'm going to do Control C V. Um, and if it starts getting a bit slow, because one of the things when you start getting quite a lot of stuff going on here, um, it does cache or just try and uh, what's the word? It um, updates the graph every time you make a change, and it can start getting really slow. What you can do if that happens is you can actually pause the graph while you make changes. So you go edit, pause graph, execution, which is actually control and full stop if you want to do that. But when it's paused, you can do changes a lot quicker. Um, so this one, I want this to be source. Uh, bum, bum, bum. It's going to be initial speed for that one. And I'm just going to CV to duplicate that one, and this one's going to be speed direction. So initial speed direction. Let's just copy all of that and place that in there. Oops, I hit enter on there, and it went into the node, which you can do. Um, so just start briefly. One of the good things about this is you can go inside these and see how they're built up. Um, if you get that sort of interested in them. Anyway, um, right, so initial speed, um, at the moment it's zero. I'm going to do zero to 10. And then initial speed direction. Now, we've got to change something here slightly because if you look at this source air, initial speed direction is three values, i.e. a float three, whereas this is just a float. So our parameters on our random variations are float threes. If you mouse, mouse over there you can see they're floats. I mean that's floats. We want to be float threes. So if I right click that, go value type, say math float three, it will change that to a float three. And if I do the same for this one, float three, there we go. So now we can sort of play around with what direction they're being shot off in. So if I do say minimum minus one in the X, max is one in the X, so you can go either negative X or positive X and do the same for the other ones. Um, like uh, negative, actually I could put that at zero and put that at two. So even though one is basically straight up, if I've got this at two, when it randomly chooses that number, it's going to have a whole load of 1.1, 1.2, 1.3s, which will make it going up. So it's going to add just more straight upwardness to it, as well as the other attributes, if that makes sense. Let's do that. Um, 
I didn't talk about it before, but we have a bias here. So a zero um, is going to be a random number evenly distributed between these two numbers, as it were, for this one. Just look at it on uh, speed, it'd be easier. So, yep, so it'd be a random number between zero and ten. If I put this to one, this bias will lean towards, towards the number ten. So the number ten will have more or towards number 10 will have more numbers being chosen than towards 0. Uh, if I do minus 1, that will be the same for that one. It'll be closer to 0 than it will be. But 0 is just a nice mix of both. But you can play around with that. And you can obviously change the seed. Um, uh, color step variation, you can use maps. You can paint color vertex maps on these. But we won't get into that just yet. So, speed direction. That's direction. And this one's just going to be speed. And let's move this over a bit. Just while we set them up. So the big sort of thing there was that we changed the values of these to match the values of these here. And I'm going to put that to a set as well, just to have that as set. So um, I can daisy change that one into that one. I can break, hold down Alt or Command if you're in a Mac, and Shift, cut through that one. Do that. Just get rid of that connection. So let's just lay this out here on my keyboard. So now we've got speed, speed direction, temperature and fog, we're randomizing all of those and let's see what happens so I'm going to unpause and scoop this down a bit and I'm going to hit play And we can see already I've got a lot more detail in there. There's a lot more stuff going on. Because um, we're adding these sort of random velocities and random directions and random temperatures. And it's just creating a more detailed sort of smoke plume coming off this. Um, I'm going to leave it there, going to cache this, and then in the next video we'll talk about how we can add even more detail to it.